Hey guys, when you think of a Nintendo Arcade Classic, the first thing that comes to mind is probably Donkey Kong. Um, it's, a, it's an incredibly influential game, and it's a lot of fun. I'm lucky enough to have Donkey Kong Classics on the NES. Really, really fun game. Um, highly recommend picking it up. I don't really know how much this goes for as a physical copy, and I don't know if you can get it as a download. Donkey Kong's easy enough to find to play, though. So, recommend playing it. Um, nowadays, when people think about Donkey Kong, the first thing that they think about, if not the old arcade classic, they think about Donkey Kong Country, or, you know, one of the many Donkey Kong Country games that have come out since. Donkey Kong Country is an incredibly good series. Um, I really enjoyed the first one probably, probably the most. Um, but today, I'm going to talk about a Donkey Kong game that not a lot of people talk about anymore. And that's Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. Donkey Kong 94, as Nintendo Power called it, uh, on occasion, I believe. Um, and um, it's an incredibly great, it, it's an incredible game. I got it whenever I was a kid, around the same time I got my Super Game Boy. Um, and it's Super Game Boy Enhanced, which actually makes it look really, really good. Um, but I, I remember long hours on, on road trips between my house and my grandmother's house playing Donkey Kong on the Game Boy. And it was just something I'll treasure because Donkey Kong is so damn good. So let's take a look. Donkey Kong starts out the same way as the original arcade game. Mario has to climb up scaffolding to confront Donkey Kong and save Pauline. When he gets to the top, Donkey Kong grabs Pauline and climbs further up the building. Mario chases until he finally knocks DK down off the building and saves Pauline. In the original game, this is the end, or at least where the arcade starts you all over again at the beginning. In the Game Boy version, Donkey Kong regains his senses, grabs Pauline again, and runs off. Mario chases Donkey Kong through a myriad of locations, starting with the big city, through a forest, a desert, onto a plain, and a few other locations, until he finally corners DK at the top of a tower. This game is really big for a Game Boy title. Each stage is fairly short, and there are a lot of them. The nice bit is that you can save after every fourth stage, following a brief battle with DK himself. This makes the game incredibly portable. Even if you can't get to that save point before you turn the game off, the stages are short enough that you don't feel too set back if you have to replay a few. In each stage, Mario has to follow DK through a locked door. Mario has to find the key and use it to get through the locked door. This may sound easy, but Mario faces a new challenge in each stage. He may have to dodge enemies, find a way through shutters and doors by pulling a series of levers, use his acrobatic jumps to reach hard-to-reach ledges, or collect items that create temporary platforms allowing him to proceed. Each stage is new and interesting, and it never feels repetitive. On every fourth stage, Mario has to try and make it to Pauline while Donkey Kong creates obstacles to block his path. Even DK Jr. makes an appearance to help out his papa. On the last stage of every world, you get to actually do battle with DK. You have to pick up barrels and even enemies, Super Mario Bros. 2 style, to throw them back at Kong. Three hits and he's down. Mario can collect Pauline's items in each stage to invoke a short bonus game to collect extra lives. That's a hat, a parasol, and a purse. This helps give you more than enough lives to complete the game without seeing the game over screen. The lives reset after you save and quit, so be careful. Lives are so easy to come by, though, that it really shouldn't ever be a problem. And if you do lose all your lives, you'll restart from your last save point. It's a challenging game that will have you scratching your head at times, but it's never unforgiving. The graphics are some of the best on the Game Boy. The backgrounds are interesting and the character and enemy sprites are animated and full of life. When you plug Donkey Kong into a Super Game Boy, you are treated with even more colors and enhanced graphics. Seriously, check out this difference. The music is pretty simple, but catchy. Some of these tunes may get stuck in your head and you'll catch yourself humming them later on. Speaking of the music, it really fits the tone of the game. There are a few cutesy tracks that reflect the enemies or the obstacles you are facing. 
On the flip side, battles with DK or stages that seem a bit more urgent have more threatening tunes. The sound effects all work pretty well within the game. I love the sound of Mario's acrobatics and even the throwback sound effect of Mario's squeaky shoe whenever he runs across the stage. Again, if you plug the game into a Super Game Boy, you are treated with some enhanced sound effects. The only one I know for sure is enhanced is Pauline's Cry for Help. I played through the whole thing on a Super Game Boy, so I can't confirm any others. So, Donkey Kong for the Game Boy is... It's just an incredible game. Uh, it, it does not get the attention it deserves. Um, and I highly recommend picking it up if you can. Uh, a copy for the Game Boy is not that expensive. You can usually get one around 10 bucks, and the Super Game Boy itself doesn't go for uh, too much more, usually. So if you have a Super Nintendo to play it on, I uh, highly recommend it. If you have a Game Boy to play it on, I highly re recommend getting the cartridge. Um, if you're not much of a cartridge collector, you can download it on the 3DS as well, I believe, and that's probably cheaper. Um, but with the 3DS, you don't get the awesome, you know, enhanced Super Nintendo Super Game Boy graphics. Um, so pick up Donkey Kong, play it, um, and you know that's all I got about the game. Uh, if you guys like my videos, again, subscribe, like, comment, uh, throw me a throw me a throw me a line on Twitter, uh, Facebook. I'm on Facebook as well under Brazzle the Gamer. Everything's Brazzle the Gamer. You can find me real easily. So, um, I right, hope you guys enjoyed it. Later.